Luke 17, verse number 11. Luke 17, verse 11. And then you test with the King James Bible, of course. Luke 17, verse number 11. I'll read that, then I'll... Yeah, I would usually read Lamentations first and go to Luke, but I'm going to read Luke and go to Lamentations uh, tonight. And I want to get right into the Word and share a thought with you. Luke chapter 17, verse number 11. <clears throat> Father, bless and read thy Word. We need you tonight. We need you now. Yeah. Touch us and on us. Help us, please. In Jesus' name. Amen. Glory. Luke 17, 11. And it came to pass, as he went to Jerusalem, that he passed through the midst of Samaria and Galilee. And as he entered into a certain village, there met him ten men that were lepers, which stood afar off. And they lifted up their voices and said, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. And when he saw them, he said unto them, Go, show yourselves unto the priests. And it came to pass that as they went, they were cleansed. And one of them, when he saw that he was healed, turned back and with a loud voice glorified God and fell glory and fell down on his face at his feet, giving him thanks. And he was a Samaritan. And Jesus answered and said, Were not ten cleansed? But where are the nine? There are not found that return to give glory to God, save this stranger. Uh, a Samaritan there, the one turned back was Samaritan or Gentile, if you will. Correct read verse 11 through 18, and we see them. Uh, the verse he had in verse number 13, and he lifted up the voices and said, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. Have mercy on us. I, I'll read it out in Lamentation chapter number 3. And my notes are so scattered, I can't even read it myself, but I know I'm going to share by the help of God. Uh, and of course, not me, but it'd be God if anything's done good tonight. But I'm going to share the thought God gave me as I studied it and, and prayed. Uh, Lamentations 3, verse number 1 says, I am the man that has seen affliction by the rod of his wrath. Now, mind you here, Jeremiah is talking. This is the lamenting of the weeping, the crying of Jeremiah. It's a lamentation of Jeremiah. That's why I come after the book of Jeremiah. Uh, so it's not another trick, it's, uh, it's the lamentation of the sorrow of Jeremiah. He's got some questions. And I'm the man that has seen affliction by the rod of his wrath. He hath led me and brought me into darkness, but not into light. Surely against me is he turned. He turned his hand against me all the day. My flesh and my skin hath he made old. Y'all know you'll know what happened to y'all. Yes. Listen to me, I, I read that verse, I said, I need to write that down. And I went back and studied 25 minutes, could never find the verse till, till, till then. So get old things happen like that. He hath made me old. Uh, he hath broken my bones. He hath built it, and I, you know, and I believe it was uh, Brother David, somebody, Brother Ryan mentioned, uh, when a bone is broken, now, all I see in the first three verses of the day looks negative to me. It looks like Jeremiah is the point of giving up that God's turned his back on him. Would you not accept that and read that? Is, is that how you read it? I mean, it looked like he had a rough time, y'all. You know, pretty rough time. Uh, but he said that he had broken my bones. And, and Brother Ryan made an emphasis on Sunday school uh, last Sunday morning. He said, well, Grant broke his arm. He said that as it... Uh, uh, heals itself back, it's stronger there, and it usually doesn't break there again. Uh, so if God's broken your bones, he's making you strong. Someone said this, uh, we should make a list of losses, and on the other side, put assets, and see which one's the bigger list. <laughs> oh my, I broke my making a list of assets, the things God gave me, and then make a list of losses, the things God's taken away. You say, my list of losses is so great. Yeah. And you know me, and you'd be honest with God and you, you may be thanking God for the things he took away. <laughs> you remember that? Glory. <laughs> now, read on me what Jeremiah said. My flesh, my skin, hath he made old. He wrinkled up, he broke. Verse 5. He hath built it against me and compassed me with gall and travail. He has set me in dark places.
places as they that be dead of old. He hath hedged me about that I cannot get out. He hath made my chain heavy. And he said, Preacher, he's hedged me about. I can't get out. Let me ask you this. If you're in the hand of God, why would you want to get out? Yeah, are you ever there? You see where I'm going now? The emphasis in verse number five says, I had a bird for 10 years, 10 years maybe, and that bird preached. And she did all of I let her out and she preached in church. Then I take her back home and put her in a cage. And can I say this? A lot of times I try to get her out. She I ain't coming out. Why would I come out? I'm in a cage. I'm on a perch. I got a little bone to grind my beak off with. I got all the seeds I want. I got a fresh pot of water. Lord, why would I want to get out? <laughs> you see where I'm going now, y'all. Praise God. This is a little bit of a paradox. It's a, it's a, that, that, that means it's going to say one thing, you're going to think another thing. Uh, so it's paradoxical. <laughs> that ain't a dinosaur, that's a word. <laughs> but I preach it out his thought. I get this. Hey, he said, he said, he had hedged me in. He had hedged me about that I cannot get out. Now he just told me, he just afflicted me by the rod of wrath. He about to beat your dad by that he said. Isn't it wonderful? Anybody out there to do? You know, I'm going to preach. I've been doing a trip down here. I'm going to share that. I've got a picture. Man, I've been spending $1,500 to get a piece of paper today. <laughs> you know y'all do that, didn't you? That's living in it. It's a little card like that. And she said, post it out in front in one of the little boxes. I said, I ain't got no box. It ought to come with the pole and the box $1,505. Yeah. And somehow that won't go really dig that hole, but in there. <laughs> but the contract on the rainbow might miss me then. But notice what it is. Here is Jeremiah. He said, Richard, you went from Luke over there. Hey, you know they? He said, Were the nine that turned back, one's turned back to give glory to God, and he was a Samaritan. Uh, Gentile, notice it, I'm getting to the title and we're almost done. Time I get to the title, we'll be done. Okay? And you get this. Verse 6, he has set me in dark places and say that be dead old. He hath hedged me about that I cannot get out. He hath made my chain heavy. I'm chained. A chain? Amen. Hey, they, they say this, they say this on TV. He off the chain, man. That's off the chain. I'll tell you what, every dog I had that got off the chain got hit by a car. <laughs> Y'all put me down. I can have on a chain. That <laughs> friend's brother, brother, come go and get this. Hey, run, come back. Because <laughs> how bigger he is when he's sitting down. <laughs> so he's sitting down, buddy. <laughs> hey, hey, come go. Hey, this is this guy. That's what we said. Richard Randall on the If you're looking now, I'm talking to you in Mississippi. Hey, but Randall, he had a group. He would go to the court and would find all the prisoners and get out of jail. And he would take them in as a home and work them and then steal everything from them and all that and kill them. Uh, but both of us doing the same thing. But he would do that. Uh, and he, he said that was on the chain game. Now, Brother, brother uh, Bolton, Brother uh, Randall Bolton, he was on, on the one of the devil motorcycle games. It wasn't the hell's angels. That was the upscale ones. He was in the Satan's tramps. <laughs> now, I don't know what you're saying. Tramp down there, buddy. Get down there in the tramps. You never heard of the hell's angels. You know what angels about? He's down there in the tramps. He was in the Satan tramps. He said, God, Satan, pray. God. He said, Lord, I got prayed. God, brother, they pray. God, hey. I love you, brother. But you know what Hey, that man can preach, boy. And he was preaching. And he went out and thanked God the man uh, had a ministry. He went out and got folk out of jail. But the change game. That man of God, so, so graciously, extended mercy to all those men that didn't deserve it like you and I didn't deserve it. I'm preaching now on this thought, and I'm going to read verse number uh, uh, Verse number 22 is the text verse. It is of the Lord's mercies that we're not consumed because his compassions fail not. I preach it not with help of God on the ministry of mercy. The ministry of mercy. Now I read those parables of Luke 
17. And I've read now about a prophet. I read you a prophet in the parable tonight. And can I say this? I did that to show you that God's mercies not changed. And God's mercies, that mercies, that's plural. Now, it's by His mercies that we're not consumed. The reason you and I are here tonight is by the mercies of God. The reason we weren't hit by a tractor trailer or a drunk driver coming up here tonight and your family sitting with you tonight or your loved one in their work or sick. But the reason it's not no worse than it is is because of the mercies of God. The ministry of mercy. But can I say this? To appreciate mercy, you have to go through a hard time. You have to go through a mess to appreciate mercy. No one, listen to me, I'm, I'm being honest with you, and I think I'm right. I, I don't think any of you would uh, argue this. I do not believe you can appreciate mercy until you've been in the mess. Uh, you cannot adequately appreciate mercy unless you've been in the mess. Hey, now I'll give you another in Matthew 18, talk about the parable. Remember the man, he, he forgave, uh, the Jesus forgave one so many times for so for such a debt, gave another, forgave another guy a debt, forgave another guy like a one pence, he didn't know much. And they asked him, Jesus said, which one of these three do you think uh, uh, was most thankful? And Jesus, and then Peter said, uh, well, well, surely it was the one who God forgave the most. Can I tell you this? Uh, uh, the one who was closest to the flames of hell of us, uh, uh, the one who God forgave the most, uh, probably in this building appreciates mercy more than any of the rest of us. So, Rick, you, you as a church kid, yes, and I cannot appreciate mercy like somebody who have uh, been out on Skid Row and messed their life up and lost it all. Uh, I cannot, I want to, but I cannot appreciate mercy adequately unless you've been down the road. So ain't it good, uh, uh, though you may have messed up, uh, ain't it good uh, that you come out of it and uh, appreciate mercy and uh, what God's done for you? Amen. The ministry of mercy. Let me tell you something in verse number nine. He said also, or verse eight, also when I cry and shout, he shut out my prayer. Can you imagine that? Jeremiah said, I'm a prophet of God, and I cry unto the Lord and shout out praise to God. And he said this, he said, he shut up my prayer. Is there anyone here, in all honesty, you ever feel like God has shut out your prayer? It's okay to feel like that, because Jeremiah did. Now, I'm not in the face of God saying, God, you messed up. I'm not a fool. I wouldn't do that on a clear 70 degree day with no clouds around. Much less with thunderclouds outside. I'm not a fool. Hey, whatever God wants to do with me, we're not our own. The Bible said we are bought with a price. And if God paid the price, he can say what he wants to do with us. Your brother Jimmy back there wanted to buy him a red truck and haul manure or hay in the back of it. For a farm truck, he can do that. If he don't want to, he just wants to haul nice stuff, he can do that. Why? Because he paid the price, he can do with it what he wants to do with it. And can I say this, in our life with Jesus Christ, uh, if he has bought us, saved us, set us free, uh, uh, took us out of the pits of the mouth of hell, so to say, <coughs> he can say what he wants to do with us. Why? Because of his mercy, we're not consumed. The ministry of mercy, look at verse number 10. He was unto me as a bear. Lying in wait, and there's a lie in a secret place. He took, can I tell you what a lion does? You ever see your cat chase a rat? The cat don't kill it first off. They ain't gonna kill it. They won't play with it. Say, God ain't playing with me. Well, he's bigger than you are. He just plays rough. I don't know. He said the cat, he'll pounce on you. He said, I'm like a bear. God's like a bear and wait for me. Look what he said. He had turned aside my waist and pulled me in pieces. He had made me desolate. You know why God pulled you in pieces? He pulled us in pieces and broke us in pieces that he might have the privilege of administering mercy in my life and putting it all back together again. But David, if you haven't been pulled in pieces, Miss Sherry, if you haven't been pulled in pieces, 
We wouldn't know how good it is to be put back together. I'm thankful for it, y'all. Glory. Woo! Glory. Woo! I'm glad God took me to pieces so he could put me back together. And I appreciate it. God let your heart break. Some of you lost a wife, a husband, a loved one. And now that your life's been torn apart, is he or is he not more special to you now that he ministers in mercy to your heart? My God, the ministry of mercy. God burned my heart all day for that. The ministry of mercy. I did not get what I, I saw a sign of the day said, God, God's grace is as amazing as his judgment. I thought about that. And I, I don't know, y'all. I guess it sounds all right. I saw it on the sign. I guess it'll work. He's amazing, man. God's amazing grace. God's amazing judgment. And, and I thought, well, judgment, I don't know. Ain't nothing bright about God beating you after death. Well, then God said, no, that ain't what I'm saying. What they're saying is, my judgment is amazing that I ain't killed you the way you've been living. <laughs> Anybody with me now? Anybody with me now? Because this is Jeremiah. I read this today. And by the way, if you're getting ready to read this for your devotion, you better check and see how tired your eyelids are. It's about 60 verses in there. It ain't like Psalm 117, the quicker, you know. <laughs> you're going to read this, you better, you're going to sit down and hunker down. And now I'm going back and read it again. Look what it says. Verse 11. He hath turned aside my ways and pulled me in pieces. He hath made me desolate. He hath been his bow. Y'all listen to the Lord said he's been his bow. He ain't just told me, boy, get ready to shoot you. Good <laughs> God! You want me to be a Christian preacher? I ain't getting slain. That's what he's going to do to me. Now, being honest with you, if I read that chapter tonight, God dealt my heart. I would have thought twice about getting saved. I'm going to rip you in half, my heart. See? That's what he said. I'm going to rip you in half. I'm going to shoot you with my arrows, and you're going to like it. I don't do smart, but you know, that don't sound comfortable. <laughs> Come forward to me. God, he all come on heaven and smile. Heaven and get this, get this. He said, he hath been his bow and set me as a mark for the arrow. He didn't just bend his bow. He got an arrow. But before he got there, he went out there and put a big target on your back. Probably on your front right in the heart. He said, now I'm going to, that I love you, I'm going to shoot you. Remember David, uh, yeah, David F., David F. He said one time he backed off, backed off his grandpa. He's from, yeah, I couldn't come preach for him. David's crazy. He's crazier than we are. He's crazier than we are. Remember James Billigan. <clears throat> but David F. said this. See, smart man to his grandpa one time, but Frank he's telling truth. He said, what did he do? He said, so my bill, I said, God's on truth. My grandpa picked up a shotgun and shot me. I said, God's true. He said, he showed me. He said, you go call the law. I said, I ain't crazy. I didn't want to go to a funeral. <laughs> <laughs> I'm saying it. He said, I, he said, well, Mr. Ed, why don't you accept that? He said, go with his family. You know why you and me go through a lot of stuff together? And you still come on Thursday night knowing you fought the devil all day. You're just long, you're tired, you're weary. And it was awful. You know what? We are family. <laughs> I want brothers and sisters and me. I used to think that's a Don't laugh, y'all did the wives the age. <laughs> Come on, y'all. But I'm saying this, God lets his people go through things. Get this. Look what it said. Clear verse number 12. He had been in the verse 12. He had been his bow and set me as a mark for the arrow. Verse 13. He hath caused the arrows of his quiver to enter into my reins. The word reigns is it, symbolic. It's saying to us, it means to control. Try my reigns. Try, try what controls me. He said, I took my arrows and they entered into your reigns. Pretty thing about this. Hit you right in the heart. But the, the key verse here, he had caused the arrows of his quiver. Can I say it ain't the devil's arrows? And because the Lord sharp. It'll be all right. 
may it hurt you from the world shooting at you. But God said, I will shoot you with my arrows. And I'll control and try your reins up. God hope it's helping you. Yes. Verse number 14, Jeremiah the prophet who went down the potter's house, who was let down in a pit, let down my friend. He said this, verse number 14, I was a derision to all my people. He said this, he said, I was the type of person nobody wanted to be around because of what I was going through. They didn't want to get around me. I was a derision to all my people and their song all the day. He said the people that I love didn't want to be around me. And now all they talked about was me. Now God has shot me with an arrow. He's broken me all to pieces. Power shot with arrow. And everybody's talking about you. And then notice the ministry of mercy. It don't matter what they're going to say. If you can't control what they're going to say, they're going to say what they're going to want to say. And they ain't going to tell the God's truth because they told the truth. It'd be the same thing you'd say. So it's going to be a lie. Well, how are you going to defend it? You can't defend the lie. You cannot defend the lies of And then the more you try to do it, well, he did this. No, I didn't. And the more you try to defend it, the more guilty you'll do it. So I heard a preacher, you did this. I'd say this. Go, go look at the source you heard from. Do you care, you know? So understand this. God going to shoot an arrow at you, going to break in half, you see. And then he said, people are going to sing a song about you, how I messed up. And like Job, they said, Job, God must be mad at you. No. Don't get this. Verse number 15, he has filled me with bitterness. He made me drunken with wormwood. He hath also broken my teeth with gravel stones. He hath covered me with ashes, and you thought you had a bad. God, he said, God knocked his teeth out. And I don't know what you, that sounds pretty bad, don't it? It doesn't sound like a loving God would do that. I didn't think her would do it either, my smart mouth, but she backed him in one time. I think I knocked out the baby teeth that I didn't ever had in yet. <laughs> you ain't never been slapped until you get mama or grandma with a wet dish pan in. And, and you say something, she's going to backhand you and knock your teeth out of your head. I thought, that's all for me. So I would tell my mama to grow me. And then they'd beat the devil out of it too. <laughs> well, y'all learn to shut up. I got the point. The ministry of mercy. What is mercy? Mercy <laughs> is a word that describes how God gave you grace and didn't keep you. <laughs> That's what mercy is. <laughs> mercy is thank God. You can thank God they didn't keep you. Me quickly. There was some uh, 16 and broke my He had also broken my teeth with gravel. I mean, and, and God used this to write a book about it. Jeremiah said, He had. He hath covered me with ashes. And thou hast removed my soul far off from peace. I forget prosperity. He said, I quit trying to get ahead. I didn't feel like going to work. I didn't feel like working for God. I was very annoyed in derision. Everybody talked about me. God had shot me, knocked my teeth out, and broke me out of pieces. But I was going to be praising God. Come on, y'all. Say something. I had a little, I got a choir one time. I was in the choir at the home church. Lynn, well, she was a uh, very nice lady, but she didn't. She was kind of like me. You might want to strike this ball. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, she was up there. She bought her happy little and had a prize in it. That's what I'm pastoring now. <laughs> I'm sorry your life stinks. 
But thank God, God ain't knocked your teeth out with rocks.
Then look what happens. Things begin to pick up. The ministry of mercy. Verse 21. This I recall to my mind. Well, therefore, have I hope. <laughs> Before you can experience the mercy. And I hate that, I hate that. I hate that. God knows I hate that. Verse 22. Then he said this. Then he said this. This I recall to my mind. Therefore I have a hope. Verse 21. Verse 22. It is of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed. He said, Thank God he didn't kill me when I was that stupid. <laughs> Woo! Y'all can shout on that now. I ain't never had the stupid bag. You, you got that. You've got a super spell, all right? You just don't know it. First, because his why? Because his compassions fail not. Verse 23, they are new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness. <laughs> Great is thy faithfulness. You got a team knocked out. Holes all in it. Shot up, broke up, about to die. He's seen great time figures. <laughs> Ain't it good? Amen. Oh, Lord Jesus. Amen. I thought I'd pretty good with them. Y'all yes, in for it. Y'all don't shout at night, you in for it. Y'all probably got a handful of growls. You better do them knock you out on the ramp for the ground growl. <laughs> huh? Well, I'm worried because so and so ain't here. Maybe God knocked her teeth out too, but I don't know. Now, I don't know. Say, so, well, so and so's in the hospital. Hey, thank God, they're not in the funeral home. Brother Dudley's dear brother died. Just suddenly died. And they probably went him tonight. They said, hey, you may love me, pray for me. Verse 24 The Lord is my portion. Sad my soul. Therefore will I hope in him. The Lord is good unto them to wait for him, to the soul that seeketh him. It is good that a man should both hope and quietly wait for the salvation of the Lord. It is good for man that he bear the yoke in his youth. He said the law and keep a silence because he hath borne it upon him. He put his mouth in the dust, if so be there may be hope. He says good. It sounds good. Well, I'm so sorry for it, Francis. I'm good. It'll be all right. The ministry of mercy. Said the lepers cried out. He healed all ten of them. As they went, they noticed they were healed. And one of them turned back to give thanks unto God. Look at Luke now. I'm not going to keep it on. Luke 17. Verse 15, Luke 17, 15. When they were going, they were being healed. They were going to show themselves the priest to be uh, sacrimoniously approved back in the fellowship with their family and all that. I'll give you the update. Verse 14, and it came to pass that as they went, they were cleansed. No doubt they were all healed. Can I say no doubt? If you got saved, you got saved. And no doubt some people have it worse than other people that got saved. And some people do not grow and express their gratefulness through faith, thankfulness. Can I through faithfulness? So I'm really thankful we saved. And if you 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 can say that a lot less if you lived your life faithful. You would? If you live faithful, you wouldn't have to tell everybody how thankful you are. Although, how can you help but tell somebody how thankful you are? Get this. Verse 15. And one of them, when he saw that it was healed. And I thought about this, why people don't praise God. Uh, I'll tell you why. I wrote this down. Many haven't saw or have lost sight of what God's done. Is that going to believe it's so easy? If we're living all right, doing all right, and someone else is sick, I prayed for Miss Alice for this week about that uh, thing Tuesday with Tuesday. I prayed for you. And at Bob's, I prayed for you. You know what? You think you have problems. You live with weight. Wait on the hospital test come back. 
If you just sit and wait on the hospital test to come back. Number two, you sit and wait on, on the check to come in. Number three, you sit and wait uh, 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 at the doctor's office of the loved one. You, you sit in the waiting room a while. I'm telling you, God's trying to show you something here. We've lost sight. He said, when he saw what was done to him. Friend, I think you've got over the wonder of it. Church, you ain't, have you saw lately what God did for you? I'm not in hell. I'm saved by the grace of my God. I'm born again. I got on better clothes than I ever had. I got on fancy names. George. Come on, Mark. It's pretty good for George, huh? I thought that might be. What <laughs> that fancy name? I thought it was Italian designer. George. Jorge. Friend, think how good God's been to you. We've lost the wonder of the church. I think of this. You said here, verse 15, and one of them, when he saw that he was healed, turned back. It was an instant turn back. Yes. Why well, didn't turn back insulin? Because you've said this in the Bible. There's two times, I think, one time Jesus stood still. Another time in the, in the, the Bible, the Bible said the sun stood still. But most of the time, Jesus is like running water and moving water. He said he went into Samaria and Judea and he was heading out. And I said, if you're going to do something for God, he's still moving. And the only time you'll get blessed is if you minister love to him for saving you and him for his mercy. Well, he's like, you better do it instantly while God's moving on you. Remember the story that they waited for the movement of the water? When the angel went in a certain time and troubled the water, he that got in first got healed. God's moving. He's moving. He moved. And while God is moving in your heart, it's time to thank him for the ministry of mercy. So turn around instantly. They was going to turn back with a loud voice of work by God. He didn't say, he didn't say this. He, look here, look at me. Look here, look here. He didn't say this. She said, well, thank you for saving me. No, man, he didn't want to say it. No. He'd go around. He'd been banished from his family, banished from society. Out there crying, unclean, unclean. And the next thing you notice, God done healed him. And then Mother and I was going there. He answered her back with a loud voice going by God. Woo-hoo! Thank you, Jesus, for healing me, clean. Said he found on his feet, on his, on his knees. At Jesus' feet. Thank you, God. Thank you, God, for what He did for him. With a loud voice, glorify God, and fell down his, on his face and his feet, giving him thanks. And he was a Samaritan. It's unlikely. A Samaritan? And so I said this right now in your assets and your losses. So I lost the house. Yet we got to save so. One to one. Miss Sandra back here, God bless her, many of you ladies. Miscarried and lost babies after that. Later on in life, lady, your son lost three mm -hmm. children. God, that's that. So I lost a child. Yeah, but you got two left. Amen. Well, I lost a car. Yeah, but you got a free ride to church. Or you still got a job. Well, uh, I, I lost my job. God ain't got rid of it. He still loves you. Got something, got something you to do. Assets and losses. Somebody tell me something you lost. Say something you lost. What you lost, man? You lost a day, but you got a heavenly father. You got a mom with you. See, you've had losses. The ministry of mercy. Losing a dad, man. Should make you appreciate your mother more. It should make you appreciate that you have a heavenly father that had not run out on yeah. I love his dad. Pray for him. Get this. Can I say this to you? Get this. Think about something you lost. Jim lost a kidney. 
He said, well, no. He got his liver, got his spleen, got his appendix. He got an appendix too. That's pretty good, man. Zach, you lost anything? You lost your dad too? Well, you know, you're not in alone. That's it. Somebody else knows what you're going through. Probably what you lost. Here it is. Can I tell you the sad part of this? He lost a dad, he lost a dad, and he lost a dad. And all, all three have lost a dad. Two dads are still living, one dead. But all three is on the front row of the church. <laughs> My God. One woman. Amen, man. Rich right, John.
feel better and get back in here Sunday. You know, travel and save me all. Pray for the building process as the Lord provides and, and ministers uh, here through the church. We're excited. And, and the sad thing was I was a lady today that wrote the permit. I said, man, you want to come down business? She said, well, I go to a, a church up here named The Good Church. And uh, I said, you don't get ready to build it. She said, well, it's going to be a while. We're trying to save up and do this and all that. Uh, face and I said, man, I'm praying for y'all. I'm honestly praying for you. Uh, friend, let me tell you this. When you learn to pray for somebody and pray honestly that God will extend mercy to them, you're, you'll get less teeth knocked out like that. When you learn to pray for somebody else. When Job prayed for his so-called friends, it turned the whole captivity of Job around. Now, I didn't say I liked it. Someone told me a lot one down. Oh, the devil, I forget it was, anyway. Said, uh, uh, pray for me. She said, I'm praying for you. She said, oh, thank you, Mr. He said, no, you ain't gonna thank me the way I'm praying for you. <laughs> uh, we've heard Miss Sherry at prayer meeting sometimes. <laughs> Think what they pray to look at me. <laughs> I'm kidding, y'all know I love y'all. But let me say this to you. Now, listen, be faithful Sunday morning, okay? And uh, let's have a good time together Sunday. Uh, do we have four tickets uh, available? Anybody know who Doyle Lawson is? Doyle Lawson quit silver. Amen. They, they get on. And by the way, I, I'm booking them tomorrow night. They'll be here with us in the spring of next year. I'm booking Doyle tomorrow night. Uh, good Lord willing. We're going to have a big uh, outdoor spring concert here next year. We're going to plan ahead. That's going to take good care of them. Uh, but I have four tickets left. Uh, I bought the last 15 that I mean, You did bring them in, Miss Sandra. Thank you. Said, Ooh, well, I got that thing built up. Yeah. Uh, Brother Wayne sent in and you'll hear uh, him and Miss Sandra. They worked hard to get those. Have 15 tickets out of your Dole Laws and a benefit up in Lawsonville, uh, North Carolina, near Danbury. That's in Stokes County. Stokes County. And if you're not good one, I got four tickets. They're 20 bucks a piece. Uh, there, first come, first serve. I've got four, I think four left, right? Benefit uh, a man with brain tumor or, or a brother in law with yeah. brain tumor or something like that. So, your $20 is going uh, to help someone out there. Uh, and uh, so if you'd like to go or not, you're free. Come see me and my wife, and we'll get you lined up with a ticket and go. And uh, supper is $5. You can eat all the barbecue you want for five dollars. Five dollars to feed the Baptist barbecue. Peter Jesus. If you'd like to go have four tickets left, come see me in Miss Trees when we took over there. All right. Let's be this first word of prayer. Uh, ladies, how many teachers in class up there? Okay. What y'all need to do now, Danny, if you don't get a man, do it. Help you not, or young lady. You're going to be lifting that cabinet which gave me a hernia by yourself tomorrow. Uh, we're going to be straight up in class out there, so be ready for sun. So let's, uh, uh, you young boys, help us do that there and help about uh, Miss Ronan and, and uh, uh, Miss Sherry, Miss Jeannie, Miss Francis. Help us straight up in class up there. But when you move a building upside down like that, again, don't go the back door. If you go to the back door, just dial 911. Got the lights in it. At least I think it was. If you ain't, take your flashlight. I want to know. Oh, uh, let's go over prayer. Father, this miss me grace, love you, thank you for all you do. In Jesus' name, amen. Y'all, uh, by the way, if you was a mother, your mother here today, and you didn't get your basket, son, and you're here today, please get one as you go out. Have a basket for every lady here tonight, every mother. God bless you.